Well, it doesn't really matter where she is, does it? She is quite a sight. This is the Mighty Dash. We are on the ground in Fortuna, California, on the Northern California coast, KFOT. And we're going to do a quick little hop from this airport by Orbix down to another one, just north of San Francisco, Santa Rosa, Charles M. Schultz Airport in Santa Rosa. And yes, that's the Charles M. Schultz, as in Charlie Brown, as in Snoopy, as in Snoopy and the Red Baron, as in one of my original heroes of aviation, namely a beagle who somehow managed to fly his doghouse in circles around Manfred von Richthofen in the First World War, uh, at least in his canine brain. We're set up the way we are, on the ground, with the door open, with the AP running, in part to fulfill a request from a viewer, from a subscriber, who said, you know, uh, these days you tend to be um, starting up on the runway with the engines turning, and um, could you please do a video that has more to do with the startup procedures and um, along with it, the flight planning that goes into making one of these videos. So um, it's really my pleasure because um, it um, it's no mystery how it's done. And it is um, just one of the little uh, simple things about uh, simulated flying that uh, actually is uh, quite nice to do. It's a neat little challenge to figure out, uh, but um, I'll just walk you through it. I use a website called Sky Vector to plan out my flights, and um, it looks just like this. You go here and you enter a departure and a destination, and you either explicitly type in some waypoints or you drag um, your route around until you hit certain waypoints and um, and there you are. Now, you might wonder, well, how do I decide what route to fly? How do I uh, decide what waypoints to go to? And the answer is that in the real world, you would take a look at a flight plan. You would map one out that is as close to direct as you can get. You would file for it and then see if you get it or see if you get it with certain amendments, you know. What we're doing this time is sort of filing our own, um, building our own. And um, to get back to the original question, which is, well, how do you, how do you know what to, what to look for? What I do for that is I generally go to a website called FlightAware, which you probably normally know because you use it to track um, you use it to track uh, airline flights. And um, what you can do is you can set KFOT and KSTS and up will pop any flights that are routinely used. Uh, between the two points. Now, it just so happens that there aren't any. So we're going to build this ourselves. And, you know, what we're going to do, I think, right now we've got it set up so that we depart on runway 29, which is pointing very slightly northwest. And then we loop around this way and we come to Jaeger and we come down Jepet. I am wondering whether it won't be just a little more scenic, and there's absolutely no other reason to do it than that, than pure scenicness, that since we're going to be flying out this way, we might as well fly out and instead intercept some other point that will take us out over the water. So let's do this. We're going to fly out of runway 29, and instead, we are going to, and you see I'm dragging this, we're going to go to the Fortuna VOR, F-O-T, 
just going to add that to our plan. And then we'll take the route from there and we'll instead go down the Victor 494. So let's drag this right here. Get us onto the Victor 494. Give us a little more scenic route along the coast here. So we'll click on yes for Jenny, which is the uh, intersection, the fix. And then we'll fly it the rest of the way inland and down and back up to Santa Rosa. It'll give us a flight time of about 41 minutes and a reasonable distance. It'll let us get up to a decent altitude and that will be cool. So having established that and uh, I, I determined what runway we're going to use. Normally you would uh, check in with ATIS and find out what runway is in use. But what I'm doing right now is I'm just going into Active Sky next and I'm looking at the weather conditions and the wind is negligible and since we are right next to runway 29 right here what we'll do is look at this plateau we're up on that's that's really just that's nice it's nicely done everything is nicely done since we are right here at the entrance to 29 hogging up two or three parking spaces as you can see We'll just taxi out to it because there's really no reason to go all the way down to here, come back, and, and, and do that. So no sense in that. So what we will do is program out our route into the FMS, get started, taxi out to 29, get up in the air, and get going. So uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to, in the Mighty Dash, close the doors, which involves hitting the Shift-E key, and up will come the door. We will um, pop inside, and we will take a look. Now, as you heard from that whistling noise, we've got the APU running right here. And our bleeds are open from the APU, which means we're conditioning and heating our air. And we will do a uh, before start checklist. And I'm not, uh, well, what the hell. Let me just reach right now for our normal checklists before start here. Trims, let's double check down here that they're set. They're not, so we will set the elevator trim, which is right down here. That chirping noise you hear, by the way, is when you hold down the um, trim, that's to tell you that the trim is in transit. All right, we'll set that to takeoff trim. We will set our aileron trim to neutral, and our rudder trim will set to 10 right, and that's to counteract the tendency to pull left. Door and fueling lights are out. Passenger signs, let's check them, are on. Cabin report has been received. Flight deck door is locked, but we'll check that right there. And we will check this here, and it is locked. Uh, Anti-collision lights should go to red, and that's to warn people there are going to be props turning in a second, and you could get your head cut off. APU bleeds, well, they will they should be off, and, and they will be off before we start the engines. And batteries we've checked already, and everything's copacetic. So before we get started, let's um, load some fuel on the aircraft, and let's... Um, get a route plugged into the FMS. So the way you load fuel on the um, Mighty Dash is you've got a separate application for that. And we load that up and we go to weight and balance. And our passengers are fine. And we've got a flight time of about a little less than an hour. So let us give us enough fuel to go an hour plus another um, hour and 15 on reserves. So that gives us time to fly 45 minutes to our diversion and then another half an hour after that. So figuring that we burn 2,200 pounds total per hour, we need 
Let's say 4,500 pounds of fuel. Enter that there. Hit calculate, and our weight is a little bit outside of tolerance. So let us normally, that means we're a little bit forward on our weight. Let's make our luggage 15 items instead of 20. And we'll make this 60. We're still a little bit outside of limits. So let us put in 5,000, see if that balances out. All right, that moves our CG a little bit. Forward and let's bring a few passengers to the back. So let's make that nine in the front and calculate that. That moves our CG too far back, so let us move them back to the front. And See whether that gets us within limits. Our zero weight is just a little bit high. And I confess I'm not great with the vagaries of weight and balance, but our takeoff weight is within limitations, and the only thing that is outside of parameters is our zero fuel mass, but that's not really especially interesting because we're more concerned with this number right here and that number is fine so what we'll do is we'll say send the data to the flight sim and you'll see that it pauses and we'll unpause and you'll see that our fuel has now gone up to 5000 which is where we want it to be so having done that before we go any further with the route let's go into our fuel page, check our basic weight, 4639, which is correct, which corresponds to our dry operating mass. We've got 5,000 of fuel, and we've got, let's put our passengers in, we've got 76 equals, and for cargo, we look right here, and our baggage is 2846. So we'll enter that right there, 2846. That gives us our fuel, our zero fuel weight. And then let's put our fuel on board, which is 5,000. 62697 which roughly corresponds to this it's a little bit light and let me see where I've gone wrong it's not counting the passengers quite as heavily we've got 76 passengers and how much cargo have we got ah you see our cargo is wrong, so our total cargo is, no, it's actually correct, 2846. All right, we seem to be a little bit lighter than we thought, but um, that is okay because everything checks out. So for our alternate, we'll say we want... 1750 which will get us about 45 minutes and for the hold we want um, half an hour in the hold so that gets us 1100 and our little extra special 
fuel reserve is 500 pounds. And so we go to our perf page. And since we haven't entered a destination or an origin yet, it's not going to be able to tell us how much we got and how much we have till we get there. So let's do that. Now, you see we've got a fully populated flight plan, and that's from the last flight. So to get rid of it, you go highlight a line, and you just enter 99. And that's done. So we'll enter an origin, K, F, O, T. And we'll enter a destination, K, S, T, S. And now, when we go to perf, it'll tell us that we've got an hour of endurance. And the flight is only 41 minutes. And once we get airborne, it'll give us a precise calculation of um, what we'll have when we get there. So that is taken care of. Now, that is our gross flight plan. Our more precise flight plan will enter thusly. We will go to Sky Vector and look at our fixes. So our first fix is FOT for Fortuna. We highlight the line after our departure and before our arrival, and we type in F-O-T, and it inserts it before. Now, from Fortuna, our first fix is Jenny, J-E-N-N-I. So, again, we highlight the final line, and we type in J-E-N-N-I, and away we go. We confirm that this is the right intersection and that it's in the right neighborhood, and it is, and so there we are. Uh, next is the Victor 494. Now, the way you do this in the Dash's FMS, which is made by a company called Universal, is you hit the list function when you're in the flight plan, and it says list of what? Uh, NDBs, intersections, um, did I just say intersections? I sound like uh, Charles Bronson um, hitting all his syllables wrong. Um, VORs, airways, and gaps, and we want airways, so we hit that. And the only airway that comes out of Jenny is Victor 494, so it enunciates that, and up we go with that. And it tells us, then it pops up a list of, okay, where you want to get out. And we want to leave the airway at ENI Mendocino and you can see that it is number three on the list so we hit number three and away we go there once we get there we pick up the Victor 199 so again we go to list airway and now the choice is bigger because more airways go out of Mendocino so we want the Victor 199 and now it asks us, where do we want to get off? Where's our off-ramp? And our off-ramp is Boers, the intersection Boers. Let's see if it's listed. It is six, so we choose it. And there's Boers. Now, looking at the weather, and again, this gets down to, well, what, uh, what, what, what approach are you going to fly? How are you going to get there? And, and the way you would normally do it, is you would check the weather, then you would check with ATIS, and it would say landing and departing on such and such runway, and then you would look up a procedure and see what's appropriate for your aircraft and your weather conditions, and then you would choose it. And presumably, um, either you talk about it with ATC en route, or you would file it from the very beginning, you would um, notify in one way or another that you were looking, at least requesting, this or that approach. If not, what would happen is you would fly somewhere into this area. You would get, you would get, you know, every time I do one of these things, I have trouble with the English language. Uh, it's mainly because my brain gets ahead of my mouth, and I'm not a professional at this, so apologies. But what would happen is you would get somewhere within range and you'd be talking to someone in some phase of air traffic control, depending on where and what, and they would tell you, um, you know, you're ready to copy a clearance or an amended clearance, or 
they would fly you down to a certain fix and they would hand you off to approach, probably NorCal approach here, which handles the whole region. And they would tell you, expect the ILS to runway 32 or expect the visual to 14. And unless you had a good reason not to accept that, you would just get ready for it. And then somewhere along the way, approach control would vector you uh, or clear you to a fix and then say, after this fix, descend and maintain such and such and join the such and so approach. The way we're going to do it is we're just going to pretend we're ATC. We're going to check the weather and we're going to see what runway they would assign. And in this case, already I know that the winds in Santa Rosa are negligible. And in Santa Rosa, they tend to, when they can, fly traffic into the 42s. So we know then, did I say 42? Did I say heading 420? The 32. That's even worse. I sound like an old man. The 32. It's like, I'm going to go to the Barnes and the Nobles and pick up a book. All right. Um, it's been a long day. What can I say? So what we're going to do is we're going to shoot, I think, just for yucks, we will shoot the... You know, since the minimums here are 300 and the RNAV minimums, the GPS minimums for this runway are actually less than that, let's shoot the GPS approach in here. So I'm going to go to another website, this one called AirNav, which has approach plates for all American airports. And I'm going to choose KSTS. And I'm going to go down here. Let us choose the RNAV GPS to runway 32. And as you can see, the minimums for that are 200 and a half a mile. So let's do that. And our initial approach fix, let's do Point Reyes, PYE. So Boers, and then Point Reyes. So just type in PYE, and in we go. And even though ordinarily in real life, you'd probably set your approach and cruise since I'm going to cut the cruise out of this video. We will uh, just set up our approach right now in the FMS. And so the approach is 32 RNAV GPS. So we will in the mighty dash. And it really, really, really is mighty because otherwise, why would I call it that? We will go to menu and then arrive choose four for runway 32. There is no star, so we'll choose an approach. And let's choose the runway 32 RNAV, so that's three. And for transition, let's do Point Reyes, one. That's going to build us an approach that will start at Point Reyes. And before we go any further, you will notice that First of all, there's a no link between Point Reyes and the approach, and that's normal because it expects you might get vectors, but we'll get rid of it. You highlight it and delete it. There are also these no links, and that's between the approach and the missed approach, and we're just going to acknowledge them so they stop blinking. The other thing we're going to do is now you'll notice that... Um, our route is not fully defined here. In other words, this is not magenta, which it should be, indicating that it's the next waypoint. So we'll fix that by going DTO for direct two, and then two for Fortuna. It now lights up as magenta, and now we have a route. And we can check the route by clicking Format, and then stepping through the route like so. There's Frosh, there's Pigpen, there's Lucy. Oh, by the way, Lucy. Just say that out loud and Pigpen and say that out loud. Well, you don't have to. It's Pigpen. And remember, we're going into the airport that is named after the creator of the Peanuts. So it's no wonder. So having done that, we hit our format key again. And let us get started. So 
people wanted to know the start procedure, let me just finish up the before takeoff checklist. Uh, the APU bleed now can come off. And it gets quiet. And we set our start switches to normal. And um, let me see how I'm going to get out of here. Okay, there doesn't have to be a pushback. We're going to go straight over here so we can start up in place. And the way we do that is we turn off the bleeds, turn our start selector, which will direct juice for the start to two, because that's what we start first for hydraulics and accessories purposes. And then we just hit start. And we come down here and we move our start feather on the right for number two up to there. And we deal with the fact ah, that my um, SciTech throttle quadrant is twitchy. So uh, having dealt with the twitchiness, we monitor the start. You heard that click. That was our starter um, disengaging. We notice that the oil pressure is climbing to normal, that the oil temperatures are normal, that the ITT or inter-turbine temperature is normal. Our prop is going at a normal speed before uh, start. We will, uh, when we push them forward, they'll go up to 660. Torque is normal and our turbine speeds are all normal. So let's start number one now. Up we go, flip the switch to one, hit select, come back downstairs, ah, and deal with the fact ah, that our levers are screwy. So we've got a start going on number one and we'll move that forward. And the other thing we'll do is now that we have ruined engine two, we will let it cool down for a minute and then we'll restart it. And what I will do for the next video is I will calibrate these particular levers and make sure they're good to go. So, just waiting for this to cool very slightly. Come back upstairs, go back to engine two. Hit the start button, come back down. There we go. Move number two up and just wait for the start. Make sure it's okay. Oil pressure is low, but it's climbing and it's back into the normal again. So that much is good. And that click means that we've had a successful start and Numbers one and two are good, which means we can turn off our gen, turn off our APU, open our engine bleeds, and advance our prop, our condition levers to max. That will start sending juice to the generators turn our main bus tie off and now we can do our after start checklist so that is external power and ATU off main bus tie off electrical panels checked condition levers max auto feather selected and white and select that and white it is Auxiliary fuel pumps on. Hydraulics checked, they have been. Flaps and speed cross checked, well, the flaps are going to be flaps 10, and our V speeds are set and checked.
rudder full travel. We've checked that already earlier. PFD, MFD, ED, check nose wheel steering should be on. And it is. So we're good to go there. Turn my bleeds to min. Turn my anti-collision lights to white. Turn my approach lights on. Logo lights on because, hey, we're not shy. All of our heats can come on, but not our anti-ice. Cabin temps are fine. Now, let's set our um, AFCS. So, we're going to be cruising today at flight level. Let's take a look. We're going to be flying ever so slightly east. So, we'll fly at an odd numbered altitude. Spin our altitude bug up to... Let's make it 15,000. Make sure out cell is engaged. Make sure go around mode is set. And you do that by clicking on this. I happen to have it bound to a speed key. We will initially climb out of here in heading select mode. So let's set that. And um, let's just check our runway heading here. also do is re-engage our parking brake because it occasionally comes unstuck here. As you can see, one of the little annoyances. All right, we'll hope that sticks. And it doesn't. Boy, that's annoying. I'm going to have to file a bug report on that. All right, since it's not going to cooperate, we will just step on the brakes. And we will check our runway heading, which is 290, so we'll set that. And it is set. That's our way also of checking to make sure we're on the right runway. And... Um, take a uh, quick look outside and we'll get going. We've got our cruising altitude set. And you know what? Let's make it let's make it uh, 170. Get above some of the weather. Speaking of weather, we'll check it. 3011 and we'll set that. is set and checked. It's listing our field elevation now as 360 feet. Let's see if that tallies with um, what it should be. All right, 392 feet, so that's very close, or it's close enough. And um, so having done all of that, let us get in heading select mode and let's taxi out to the runway. Not a bad looking airport, I will say that. Check our approach. Nobody coming. It's a fairly short runway, so what we're going to do is an M as in Mike top departure, which means maximum take off power, MTOP. Instead of the normal N or November TOP, which is standard. So I'm going to set M top and our V speeds are set. Our flaps are set. Our gust lock is off. 
bleeds are men, lights are on. Let us light this candle. Auto feather is white and on. Auxiliary pumps and PTUs are on. Flaps are set. Trim is set. All right. And now we're going to punch M top. Make sure that's enunciating at 100%, and it is. I probably have enough runway to do it without this, but um, no sense in risking lives for no good reason. 80 knots has come and gone. Looking for 121, and we got it. So up we go. And up can come the gear. And we're holding the uh, magenta bar. We're above V fry. Up can come the flaps. And we are now at a thousand feet above field elevation. So down can come the nose, and back can come the props. Set IAS mode. Set the autopilot for a moment. And we're going to switch out of heading mode into nav mode, and it's going to pick up our route. Check our route. It's going to fly out to Fortuna and then come back south. And it seems to think that we are closer to this next waypoint, so I'm going to see what it's doing. Yes, it's going direct to Jenny. Skipping Fortuna entirely. Well, it's Ruth. It, it's nothing if not ruthlessly efficient. I'm just wondering what would it do if you really just wanted to fly over Fortuna for one reason or another. But uh, it's not going to oblige us. So we'll square up our heading bug. Uh, the other thing we'll do is turn off our auto feather and our pumps and our standbys and our lights and move our bleeds to min and then we will look down and we'll get one last peek at Fortuna and as we do we will look out for ice not find it yet. And as we fly through here, we will not be looking out here. We'll be looking at this, and we'll be silently repeating to ourselves, this is the airplane, this is the airplane, so that we don't get confused with our sensory inputs between what we think we're doing as we zoom through these clouds and what we actually are doing. Uh, as we speak, I am going to pop a couple aspirin because um, I've got the mother of all migraines. And yet, oddly enough, a couple aspirin sometimes helps. Pardon me, that sound you heard was my hand hitting the microphone. Just keeping an eye out right now for icing, and we're doing that in two places. One right here, it'll display that there is icing, and the other thing we'll do is we'll keep our eye on that little dingus down there, because ice builds up on this, and yes, it is modeled. So even if you don't think you're getting a reliable indication from your um, instruments, you can take a quick look right here, and you will actually see ice building up on it. So it's pretty cool. So.
so we're above 10. Check that our lights are out, and they are. Turn off our logo light, not needed. We can turn off our fastened seatbelt sign. And um, not bad looking, is it? Let's just uh, make sure our lights are off. They are. Pretty slick looking. Not bad. And I get the feeling we're just sort of going to be um, flying just above the weather here. Again, our props are in 900. I just flipped the GPWS landing flap switch back to 15. In our last flight, we flew into an abysmally short strip and had to use flaps 35. I generally don't like to because it produces, although it produces a nice pitch down attitude on approach, sort of the way you would in a GA aircraft, it also requires a lot more of a flare and a lot more power changes when you come over the threshold then um, props 850 and flaps 15, it sort of gives you a nice airliner profile and gives you a nice zero pitch or one degree or two degrees pitch up as you touch down. And the amount of pitch adjustment you have to do when you um, land is correspondingly lower. You generally have to only flare one or two or three degrees. You don't have to flare seven. So it, it eliminates a lot of the error. The downside, of course, is that you approach somewhat faster. But, you know, it's not a bad trade-off. So anyway, just to keep ourselves sane, we are heading more or less to the south, east, which is where we more or less should be heading. Just to zoom our scale out a little bit. Yes, okay, so our next waypoint is Jenny. And... Uh, we're heading right about now out into the right onto the California coast. As you can see, uh, let me just square up our heading a little bit. As you can see from the heading, we are flying about two and a half, seven and a half, about almost 10 degrees to the right from our um, track and that that that's because we've got a 55 knot crosswind which is pushing us this way so do not be alarmed that uh, chime means a thousand ago and that is our cue of course to check that else out you see second time I've done it that out cell is engaged and also we will pull back our props to 850 or max cruise and there we go. And we are not going to be above 180 so we'll keep local altimeter but what, what we will do in order to um, stay orderly and uh, be courteous to our fellow aviators is we'll make sure that our altimeter is set properly so we're not cruising at the wrong altitude. All right. So closest weather station is 30.11. So what we'll do is set our altimeter, and it's already set at 30.11. And now that we're at cruise, let's start doing our descent planning. And as I probably mentioned before and others have, the universal FMS has a VNAV function, and the dash's autopilot will fly it. It does not let you do fully automated approaches, but it will get you down to, I think it's a thousand feet for the FMS. And actually for this approach, it's only 200 feet. And um, 
from there you take it visually. But um, you know, at the moment, it even if it won't do a full LNAV VNAV profile, it will give you guidance on the VNAV, and then you are responsible for the speed. So let's check our altitude constraints here. We're going to want to hit WDSTC at 5,000 or above. So, go to VNAV, hit 2, and choose WDSTC, which is number 7. It will accept the constraint for it, and it's good. So now you've got guidance for it at the very least, even if you're going to fly visually. And you've got the seeming... Um, Got the tacit approval of authorities here. To fly such an approach. Just retrimming a little bit. Monitoring our speed, making sure it doesn't come up um, above barber pole, but we should be fine. And we have set our VNAV and our initial altitude is 5,000. And let's see when the top of descent is coming. 21 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the uh, video right here and we'll pick it up right near top of descent. See you in a bit. We are back. We are coming up on top of descent on our way from KFOT Fortuna in Northern California into KSTS, Charles M. Schultz Memorial Municipal Airport in Santa Rosa which was where he lived for most of his adult life. We are about five minutes from top of descent. We're heading down to Point Reyes right here at 5500, and we've been told to expect the ILS Interrunway 3-2 in Santa Rosa. It is Orbix's Santa Rosa in Orbix, Northern California, so it promises to be spectacular. This is my first time coming into the airfield. Our initial altitude, our initial constraint is 5,500. We've got a full load of passengers on board, and we have got... Our HUD set up with runway elevation 122 and length 6000, which is correct. And we have got our ILS frequency set in nav 1 and 2, and let me just cross check it. ILS 1093 and 321 should be the course. So let us see if 321 is the course. 321 on the right. And on the left, we have to pop into our standby mode here for our multifunction display. 321 set, 1093 set, done. And as you can see, there's our top of descent. And you can also see that whether it is Lucy or Pigpen or several other waypoints we're going to be making our way past, they are all named after creations of Charles M. Schultz, who after all created the Peanuts. And as we mentioned earlier, created one of the world's great aviators, certainly the world's greatest canine aviator, that being Snoopy. Who bravely battled the Red Baron many, many times in his Fokker triplane with Snoopy only in his flying doghouse. But he was the great World War I flying ace, and he made a big impression on a little kid. Little kid being me. I don't know why I'm not flying a doghouse here, but let's set up our flaps and our V-speeds. And that is going to be 126 and 131. And VNAV is starting to enunciate, so we can select that in our AFCS. Or if you're in a Boeing, our MCP, 
or if you're in an Airbus, our I don't know what. Our, uh, you know, uh, makes the plane go down, or something like that. Apologies to my French viewers. Apologies to my German viewers. Apologies to my English viewers and Spanish viewers and Italian viewers and everybody else who has anything to do with the Airbus, which is a very cool airplane. All right, so let's just check our before descent flows. We'll turn off our anti-ice because we're not having any right now. Our lights are on. I've said a few things just in advance because we can get busy in the approach. The landing altitude will be 122 plus 500, so we'll make that 622. Our bleeds are norm. They'll be coming to min. APU is off. Lights are good. Life is good. Now, as we descend here, we are going to be going to Point Reyes. And that, once we turn, is going to put us on a very tasty little intercept to the ILS. Once we get on this particular course, we'll switch over into heading mode, and then we'll take the opportunity to switch out of pink needles and into blue needles. In other words, we're switching our navigation source from our FMS, which is IRS and GPS based, among other things. It also, at times, blends in a radio component, but We'll be switching from that into a pure radio nav, -a nav aid setup. And here comes our top of descent. Other thing we'll do is we'll quickly check our weather. And it is slight tailwind when we land. It's going to be cloudy, overcast 4000, and 3017 which is the same as our altimeter right now, so we don't have to change anything. Again, as we approach TOD, this needle is going to come down towards the middle. I'm just going to display our VNAV so you can see everything that's going on. 2.7 miles, and you'll notice this targeted V-speed will creep up to what our real targeted V-speed is, which is, I think, about 1,700 feet per minute double check to make sure our first constraint is in there and it is and we've captured the VNAV path and you see how this is coming up to about 1700 and because it's around 1700 we'll start to bring out the power and once we get established on this descent I'll show you our cross checks to make sure everything is going fine I know already I've programmed in about 1,700. I know that our needle is centered. So I'm going to look, I'm going to see that it is about 1,700 and that our vertical deviation is zero. So that's cross-check number one. Cross-check number two is we now have to come down about 11,000 feet, so we need about... 33 miles to do it, and we are about 27 miles from Point Reyes. So, looking at our ground speed, it is pretty high, but if I start to bring that down, we'll get back within range. our power down a little more. That whistle you heard was a spike in my controls, making it think that I just chopped the power into beta range, which I hadn't. But that's another story. So there's Lucy, there's Pigpen, and very briefly as we go down, we'll set our pumps and auxes on. We'll also bring our bleeds to min. And we're still cooking down, so we need to go to 5,500 in 20 miles. We can go down 6,000 feet, and we're at 11,006. 
11,005, and we need to go to 55, so that equals exactly 6,000 feet. That is exactly on our path, and that is exactly, or very close to it, the correct, which is zero vertical deviation. So add all of those things together, and what you've got is a triple super extra cross-check. Basically, it's belt and suspenders and another belt. So that is all good. What happened was we slowed our ground speed, which g gave us more time to travel this distance. And since our descent is in feet per minute, it thereby gave us more feet to descend, which put us back on target. So, 10,000 feet, I'm just retrimming slightly. 15 miles to go, we can come down 4,500 feet, and we've got 4,500 feet to go. So we are absolutely golden. But I'm gonna give us a chance so that we don't slam into the target too much. I'm gonna reduce our power even more so it'll shallow out our descent just a little bit towards the end. At the moment, we're basically relying on physics. We are basically being pulled down by the force of gravity. It is as simple and as stupid as that. And you see right here the reason for our altitude constraints. We do have terrain. Not a ton of it, but a bit. You see right here, that's this stuff here. Nothing too much to worry about. Let's quickly brief the approach. Our missed approach altitude is going to be... Boy, it'd be nice if I could see it. There we go. Uh, 6,000. And we're going to go direct back to... Uh, back to Mendocino. Actually, that's the alternate. The... Normal mist is CabEx, which is climb on the 310. So that's going to be a very slight left turn, and then climbing left turn to 6,000, and then direct to CabEx. So we're going to be coming in at 321. If we have to go mist, we will... Um, make a 10 degree turn to the left while we're climbing. And then I will, in the FMS, go direct CabEx. All right, so we're six and a half miles away. That will bring us down 1,800, 1,950 feet. And we are less than 1,950 above our target of 1,550, so we are gonna be kosher there. Spin us around. And in a second, I'll get us in heading mode, and you'll get a good look at our localizer coming in and how we do that. At the moment, we're getting hit by a little bit of turbulence, so I'm just going to let us settle out here. I'm actually going to wait till we turn to Lucy, and then we'll do our switch. I've discovered, actually, that if you stay in LNAV, VNAV mode, it will do a nicely blended overlay approach. But I want to do this by the book, because an overlay approach is not, strictly speaking, legal. So our next heading is going to be runway heading, which is 321. We will spin our altitude down to 3,000. Make it actually 2,700, our second constraint there. Just check our HUD here. I suppose I could fly heads up the rest of the way. 
Ah, you know what I didn't do? I didn't arm our approach. So let's arm it. That would have been a problem. Just staying right around this speed. It's a, it's a comfortable speed for how far out we are. Not a problem at all. Got our little cheat sheet here. And the other thing I'm going to do before we turn final is I'm going to set reduce noise profile landing. And there we are. We are seven and a half miles from Lucy. At 3,000 miles at Lucy. Come down 2,100 feet. So it'll be slightly high. But not by much. Matter of fact, what I'll do is I'll slow us down so we can sink a little bit more. Get us back in the game. Matter of fact, I'm going to come down to flight idle because I want to slow to below 200, put in our first notch of flaps. You notice how it steepens our descent. We're now four miles and change, and we're 1,400 miles and change above. So we'll get very, very close. Now, as soon as it levels us off a bit, we will... Uh, put in our first notch of flaps because it's going to naturally going to want to slow us. Here we come, close to flight idle, and that's our scenery loading, that little pause there. Alright, now, just as soon as we turn, in comes our notch of flaps. We're not going to put the gear out yet. Let the speed bleed a little bit more. And now we're going to pop ourselves into heading mode. And we're going to change our nav source over. And we're going to pop ourselves into nav mode. And we're going to capture. And we're going to go, gonna, 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 gonna go into approach mode. So we're going to hold our altitude here because we're below the glide slope pop up our HUD, put out our gear, and we are now armed for a Cat 3 armed. Okay, we're good. Put in our final notches of flaps. We're enunciating ILS. The autopilot is in. I'm just going to let us settle out a little bit. Our screen automatically declutters, in case you're wondering what that is. That is automatically reducing the clutter. I'm just going to briefly check our gear and our flaps. And our speed is a little high, but that's okay. We're going to roll off it right now. That's why our nose is low. Just going to come back down slightly below our landing power, and I'm going to take the airplane. And we're going to fly those meatballs right there, let them settle in, come off the power a bit more. I'm forcing the nose down at this point, um, and I shouldn't be. So we're going to come off the power and bring the nose up and bring the nose up some more. And in a second, we'll bring the power back in, but we're going to let it come out for one second until the nose is right about there, give or take. Get ourselves a little higher on the glide path. Okay, we're at the outer marker. And I'll bring the power back now. And we should be stable in one second. Okay, 
We're laterally, we're good. Just moving the nose around ever so slightly with the rudder. Okay, there's the outer marker. Enunciating a second time, not sure why. Going to bleed off a little more speed. Not much. That's about right. And we're just keeping those meatballs centered. My nose is a little low. We've got a little bit of a tailwind, so I'm, I'm, I've got a little additive correcting for it. And... Okay, we're stable. Cross my fingers, we're very stable. I'm just re-trimming, bring the nose up just ever so slightly. Now our decision height is 300 here. I'm going to fly this right down to minimums. See how accurate we can get. Bring a little more power back in. 500. Keeping those meatballs centered. Not looking at the runway. Minimums. Minimums. Okay, there we are. One hundred. Just getting ourselves lined up. Welcome to Santa Rosa. Try to make this turn off here. So that's a nice little bit of ILS practice down to minimums. And this is, boy, this is a beautiful airport here. Look at those trees. As we taxi towards the beautifully modeled terminal by the looks of it. Look at that. Not bad. Hey, there's even a mighty dash there. Look at that. They knew we were coming in, they brought company. Not a Pan Am Mighty Dash, of course, but uh, a mighty one nonetheless. Anyway, on a sort of uh, slightly gloomy day here in Peanuts Land, we're going to go get a bite to eat at the French Laundry, maybe do a couple winery tours. And I think what we're going to do is, um, when I see you next, we'll be flying from here, little jaunt maybe to Lake Tahoe. And then we'll uh, see, see where things go from there. Anyway, you know the drill. Press like if you like it. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't. Subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, I will see you next time. <laughs>